give you an idea in this context of, of what it might look like, um, I'll give an example in relation to a sport that we work with or have worked with over the last four years uh, in cricket. Um, the partnership is between the Australian Government, uh, the International Cricket Council, the East Asia Pacific branch um, as the regional federation. Cricket Australia is also involved, although not so much on the extra delivery side of things, obviously, but in terms of the intellectual property and expertise. And then we work in four countries um, throughout the Pacific with cricket um, to deliver their programs through the national federations. And this is a sport that started off with us uh, with a, a, very, a fairly modest amount of funding and was very much participation based. Um, we were talking before, I think Chris mentioned this morning, about the, the issue between the international federations wanting more participants in sport and uh, the desire for our A-funded and supported programs to deliver development outcomes. Um, so this sport was very much about increased participation and they still remain one of our highest participation sports in the program. Um, but over the years, what we've developed with them is a very, very sound understanding of their role in developing communities and developing countries. And as a result, uh, over the last year and a half, um, they established a program with our support, combining with WHO to target um, women's cricket, women's traditional cricket, as an opportunity for the sport to not only grow into new markets, but to support gender inclusion in the sport, to move away from, a, I guess, a traditional form of the game, which is being espoused by the international body, and really access and utilise what was on offer for participation and inclusion in the countries we were working in. So they're in a pilot program um, in uh, Ifira, uh, in Vanuatu, and the results in working with the World Health Organization were fantastic in terms of um, more than 60% of the key health indicators for that target group in the pilot um, were, they, they, they increased um, their output in terms of their response to the program. It was a 12 week program and they had, uh, on, on average, um, a 60% increase in some of the key measurables around health uh, and well-being associated with the program. So in terms of weight, um, waste, uh, girth, um, participation in, in um, nutrition programs and healthy eating, um, it was all documented very well through the through the program. It was a pilot program that's now being expanded. So it's a, it's a small overview for you of the impact of the sport that comes in on a participation basis, but understands its broader role in the communities that we're working in and establishes a program that reflects the ability of that sport to create change in an area that's directly related to one of our main outcomes, which is um, the reduction of, of uh, non community diseases. Um, we obviously do a lot of other work in sports as well. It's not all about participation programs. It's also about building the capacity of national federations. Um, working on governance and management, uh, we've done and, and structured a lot of governance and management um, reform through the, through the regional federations and through the national federations in the Pacific. And that's an important part of the underpinning of what we call quality sport. So knowing that these organisations can and, and are along a path of development to become the best they can in order to run the programs, uh, not only how we would like them to run, but also how they should be run uh, in terms of leveraging the best benefits for the country and the people involved. Why do we do it? Um, this comes back to, a, I guess, some of my initial comments which were around the genesis of the program, how these programs start and how funding is sourced for these programs will often determine what they look like. Um, and as I said, the program itself came from uh, an understanding or a desire to engage with youth in the Pacific and very much around uh, the needs and the interests of sport and to have more funding and support for sport in the region. The funding eventually uh, was sourced through OSA, which required um, obviously the, the development plans to come over the, the program. And that's really where we had the merging of supporting development in this particular program. It didn't happen prior. 
and I think that's a really important point to understand. So, in terms of the outcomes, what we've evolved over the last four years and what we've, I guess, refined moving into this next four year period is that we're trying to sit firmly under the eight outcomes, uh, particularly in terms of, of saving lives, which is the NCD relationship in terms of physical activity, and the other is in terms of opportunities uh, for all, which comes under the inclusion banner uh, for people with disability, and, and obviously the gender um, aspect as well. But there are obviously other areas. Um, so supporters we all know is a great attractor. Um, and it is, it is what we expect to be better. There's also the enormous privacy benefits of sport. So that really adds to the, to the mix in terms of what these programs not only look like, but the realistic nature of how they're delivered in the country. I'll quickly run through some achievements. Um, certainly on the participation base, in terms of more people being active more often, um, over the four years of the program, we've had over um, 670,000 participants through the program in the Pacific. Um, obviously some of those are, are repeated, but they're the total number of participants that we've had in the program, certainly between the ages of, sort of 6 and, and, and 20. So it's a really a youth engagement program in the Pacific. Uh, over 8,500 coaches, um, officials and managers in sport have been trained through the program and the sports partners that we've used. Uh, also, we're very proud to say that more than 40% of every program that we're running, um, sorry, of every program we're running, um, the female uh, participation rate is above 40%, in some cases below 50%, um, which is terrific when you consider some of the sports that we're actually working with in their, their traditional population base. Um, I'll quickly touch on the challenges as we as we finish. Um, the having clear objectives obviously for a program and the fact that this program did start as sport funding for sport uh, and then develop into more of a sport for development or what we would know as a sport for development program has been a challenge. What that involves is us as the Australian Sports Commission being the intermediary between sport and its preconceived ideas of coming into a program and its understanding of development. And then there's a development aid that has a development focus and introducing them to the world of sport. So, we're very much, I see our role as, as educational uh, in terms of developing sport for development in the context of sport for development for all of the partners that we have. Um, and there's, there's obviously uh, you know, a num number of other areas as well, um, but certainly with the way things are moving, um, we have a, a strong desire to, to keep the investment in the pan of development side of sport but also understand and embrace the public diplomacy aspects as well. So, um, I won't go any further, it looks like we're, we're running out of time, but um, we want to open up for questions.